If you're brand new to Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast will actually hook you up with a free deck. There's five different colors that you can get. Let's take a look at them and see how good they are. All right, so we are here to evaluate the five 2019 welcome decks from the perspective of a beginner. These are not meant for established players and there's not going to be much of excitement. We are, as I stated in the introduction video, going through the process of evaluating all of this. At the very end, we'll go, we're going to go with these kind of decks. We move on to the Planeswalker decks and then add in the Deck Builders Toolkits. And we'll eventually end up building a deck at the end of this process. So we're going to start out by taking a look. For those of you who don't know, this is a deck. If you went to one of the open houses, this is the deck that you would receive as a brand new person to Magic the Gathering. So this is the one, this is the white deck, and on the back it gives a little explanation. So whenever you uh, whenever you would go to one of these events, you may get one of these randomly, or you may get to pick your color depending on how things work out. So this one is the white one. As a white mage, you know that true strength lies in cooperation. You command disciplined armies, working as one to overwhelm your enemies, your enemies I should say. Unity of purpose brings you victory. So the kind of statement that it has here on the back is not, you don't, you don't have to read it. Like you can just take the deck and open it up without even worrying about that. So as a beginner at the open house, your experience would be like this. You open up one of these, you look inside and you find out, wait a minute, this has two little things in here. So what do we get? We get a white and a red. So let's put those down for a second because those are sealed and there's this little poster that comes in here. So let's see what happens when you go to an open house, what you get with these decks. Now these decks will be used for the next number of open houses. They basically create a set of these and they exist for a full year roughly before they're replaced in the rotation. They may change that but these should be around for a year currently. So it says tips for learning and teaching magic. Learning to play. If this is your first magic deck, hello and welcome. One of the best ways to learn is to ask a friend who's already an experienced magic player to teach you. Can't wait to get started? Visit us at magic.wizards.com slash new to magic to start learning how to play. And then down at the bottom here, the rest of it is actually just to tell people how to play with their friend. Now, you're going to notice this. Look at this. This part of the pamphlet, this is all that matters for the actual new player. You flip this over. This part is the, to help educate the person who's supposed to educate the new player. So, if you pick this deck up to teach a friend, or if a friend has asked you to show them the ropes, these guidelines will help you to give them a great first experience. Number one, take a moment to look through the deck together to see the different kinds of cards that are included. Don't worry about other card types for now. This is just a quick intro. Now, this is nice. What they've done here, and this is what you have to remember, a lot of people fail to think about this when they're teaching like people how to play magic you want to give them so much information there's all this stuff they need to know not really they can build as they go the same way you did you didn't know everything you start when you started and neither did i now number two start playing right away learning while doing rather than learning all the information up front usually helps new players learn at their own pace and have some fun along the way so that's backing up what i said number three try getting started with the following core concepts if a new player finishes their first game understanding these, they'll be set up for success. So these are the four things that Wizards thinks you need to take away from a game of Magic to really understand it. Land cards and mana, reading your creature cards, casting spells, and the rules of combat. Number four, keep it simple. It's more important for learners to have a good time playing than it is for them to understand Magic strategy perfectly after their first few games. So basically, over and over, this is just trying to reinforce Stick to what you have on hand. Look at the cards there. Don't bog people down with additional information. All right, so how it works is when you get one of these, let's say you had selected the white one, you will be guaranteed to get the white half. But the other half will be a random color. It could be any of the five colors. And we have, let's just take that box out of here. We have all five colors available right here. So these are all the welcome decks. Now these will be exactly the same as I said for an entire year. And how we're going to be doing this is we're going to open all of these ones up, go through the contents. In terms of going forward towards the final deck completion, we're going to be taking the green ramp path, okay? And also another thing you need to know for this is we've spoken before about the Planeswalker decks. So we have 
I have the Planeswalker decks. These have all already been opened. So to understand the Planeswalker deck part of this, because it's the next stage, you're going to want to watch the playlist of all the Planeswalker decks videos, paying specific attention to this one right here for the green deck, because we are going to go down the green garden path and build a big, fun green deck. That's the end goal here, to build a beginner green deck using the content. So, with that said and out of the way, let's take a look at what is actually included in each one of these little intro decks. I do like the way that they do these, honestly. They give you a taste of two different colors with two little preset decks. Oh, what's this on the back here? How to cast spells. Spells of a mana cost in the upright corner. To cast a spell, tap your lands for mana. This spell costs a total of three mana right there. This symbol means you need one of... All right, so it just explains it. I like that. That's cool. I wonder if those are... Um, if that's just printed on the insert for these decks or if that's also in some core boosters. All right, so each of these uh, decks will include a rare. It's important to note that all of the cards inside of these welcome decks are standard, considered standard legal. So uh, there are cards printed in these decks that only exist inside these decks. And here's one, for example, the rares. All the rares from each of these decks are only included in these decks. And you can tell when you look down at the collector's number. Uh, it's probably, sorry, it's not focusing very well. All right, well, the collector's number is 284 out of 280. So all the cards that exist outside of the normal standard set that you can only get inside of the welcome deck will have a number greater than the number of cards in the set down here in the corner. So keep that in mind so you know, as a beginner, what you can easily replace from booster packs and what you can't replace. So Sarah's Guardian here is two white, four colors for a 5-5 five, five flyer. It's got vigilance and it gives other creatures you control vigilance as well. I really enjoy this. This is cool. These cards like this that transmit the concept of white is a white owns vigilance as one of its main concepts. And you can see that here because not only does this have vigilance, you can grant vigilance to all your guys. And it's a lovely looking angel. And angels are obviously very iconic white creatures. So another thing that you'll notice right away is we see there's a basic land here. And that's because these decks are ready to go right away. You can have them shuffle them up, but you don't even have to. You can just play them straight out of the box, which I think is fantastic. This is something I actually think that Wizards should adopt with their um, event decks, Planeswalker decks. I think that all decks that Wizards creates should actually come ready to play out of the box. There's no reason to have everything in front, to have you set it all up yourself, with the exception maybe of event decks that you're going to play in an event. Other than that, I don't see the reason for it. So we've got regular planes. So there's no, we're not going to worry too much about the lands here, obviously. We've got Oresco's Swift Claw, which is a pretty simple two mana for a three one. That's great on the curve. I like that. Nice and simple. You got Pegasus Courser. So this is going to be like a little white weenie deck, essentially. You get a, a three mana one three flyer. Whenever it attacks, another creature gets flying. So you're going to be able to use this to evade creatures that are on the ground. Some of the stuff I'm saying is obvious, but remember, this is done. I'm going over this for beginners with them in mind. That's who this is designed for, not for you guys who know a lot about magic going, yeah, I know that. That's obvious. Star Crown Stag is four mana for a three three. Whenever it attacks, you tap target creature defending player controls. This is cool because it illustrates how white has abilities that uh, regulate combat in terms of you can do this or you can't do this. And on top of that, the artwork for this is fantastic. I really like this card. All right, then we've got Take Vengeance, which is another like white we set the rules. Two mana, destroy target tapped creature. Spells like this used to cost four mana. So this is a huge jump up in aggressiveness, but it feels totally fine and fair. And the artwork is amazing. I mean, that angel looks pretty intense taking vengeance. Bam. All right, what else do we got in here? We got Mighty Leap. Now, this is a reprint from Amiket. Two mana, target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains flying until end of turn. Very, very simple white combat trick. This is a good include. Anybody who doesn't know, beginners, you want to save your instance to the last possible moment. You don't want to basically cast this on one of your creatures before attacking. You want to wait until after you've attacked and like during the attack phase to see if they're going to block or do anything to your guy. Get the maximum effect from it. All right, continue onwards. We've got Loxodon Linebreaker. This guy is three mana for a 3-2 vanilla. Just nothing to say about that. That's fine. Silverbeak Griffin, two mana for a 2-2 flyer. This is really solid. This is a solid creature. This actually only exists inside, like, this is 285 of 280. So this only exists inside this open house deck. Then we've got Revitalize, which is one white and one colorless. Gain three life, draw a card. All right, the planes here. 
Knight's Pledge. This is a simple enchantment that gives plus two, plus two. The idea is you just become a knight. So very simply transmitted. We got another Locks and Linebreaker. Luminous Bonds, showing one of White's long-term abilities. Cards like Pacifism from back in the day also did this sort of enchanted creature can't attack or block. Very cool. The artwork illustrates what it does very well. Very simple and easy to understand. All right, then we've got Dwarven Priest. And this is showing wife, white gains life, and we'll have creatures with that big fat toughness, not super aggressive. Uh, Inspired Charge is just a swarm of them boost spell that gives plus two, plus one to all your guys for four mana at instant speed. This is a really slow, unstrong card, but whatever. This is a beginner deck, so. Herald of Faith. You've got a five mana, four, three flying angel, and whenever it attacks, you gain two life. This is a feel-good angel. I like this. All right, and Sun Sentinel. We get a 2-2 two, two for uh, 2, and it has Vigilance. This thing does not exist ex outside of this deck. So this is just a standard little Grizzly Bear with Vigilance, showing that white is hardcore with Vigilance. Rust Wing Falcon, 1 mana for a 1-2 flyer. That's not too shabby at all, honestly. All right, cool, man. And, and white has had these little, tiny little birds throughout its history for a long time. And then we have... Oh, look at that. That's cool. That's pretty smart. They give you a little setup of what, what your uh, battlefield should look like. I like that. And then they've got to discover more. And on your turn, look at that. Well done. On your turn, begin. Untap, draw a card. Main phase. Play a land. Cast creatures and spells. Combat. Main phase again. And, man, nice, nice and simple. Nice and succinct. My phone getting some kind of message or something. <laughs> but it makes it sound epic. Okay, so that's the white deck. Now, I'll try and uh, get through these as fast as possible, guys. I'm trying to give the proper information at the same time. This is why this has all been broken up into multiple videos, because just uh, the, the Planeswalker decks needed their own videos, but I figured the open house should all just be in one video so that anybody who's new can get a good look all at once. So we're starting out with the Riddle Master Sphinx, exclusive to the deck. Six mana for a 5-5 five, five flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you can return a creature or opponent controls to its owner's hand. Really dig this card. It's a big fat body that can wonk up the battlefield. The artwork illustrates what it's doing very well. Very simple concept. Fantastic. All right, what else do we got? We got Wall of Mist. Two mana for a 0-5 wall. Uh, that's pretty good because blue just holds back and plays more defensively. You want to play mind games, so you just hide behind your walls. You got Talarian Scholar. This is your boring vanilla that's contrasted against that white Loxodon. Three mana in white gets you a 3-2. Three, three mana in blue gets you a 2-3. All right, so that's a nice little way of showing that information to beginners. Three mana divination, blues all about drawing cards, so that's good. Bump, 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 ba -da bump, ba bump, bump. Snapping Drake. Now four mana for a three-two flyer. This illustrates that blue gets decent flyers for decent prices. So this is not a terrible card. Water knot. Look at you. You are. This is exclusive to the open house deck. It's a three mana enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, you tap enchanted creature. An enchanted creature does not untap during its controllers on tap step and that really honestly is illustrated well with the artwork nice and simple i really like it uncomfortable chill showing ice magic being used to reduce the power of your enemies and also getting you to draw a card very cool with funky artwork excellent choice honestly these seem to be pretty well put together so far and we got avon wind mage which is a three mana for a two two flyer when you cast an instant or sorcery it gets plus one plus one to end the turn that is not too shabby i mean it shows blue's got a lot of flying action going on and the, tie, the tying into, like, casting counter spells and things of that nature. All right, then you got Sleep. This card is a fantastic way to come in for a big old combat strike on somebody. You tap all the creatures, and you can feel comfortable attacking with yours because you know the, the creatures that are tapped aren't going to be untapped and attacking you on their uh, turn. So that's pretty sweet. We got another Snap and Drake. Befuddle. This, art, this uh, artwork doesn't make sense with the card, but Befuddle is a very, very cool blue card, totally. Same as that. It's using a different kind of concept. Like, you can use ice magic to reduce your enemy's power. You can mess with their brain to, you, to reduce their power. Even though the artwork does kind of show them getting choked and held by the magic. Which kind of makes it a little weirder. Alright, second water knot. What else do we got in here? We got a frilled sea serpent. Right on, man. I remember playing with sea serpent when I started the game. This is much better than sea serpent, though. Six mana for a four six. And for seven mana, it can't be blocked. They've really stepped it up. They don't make them junky like the Sea Serpent anymore. I like this. It's a pretty simple concept, too. You pay a bunch of mana, and it can swim under and come mess somebody up. All right. Air Elemental, a mainstay from the beginning of Magic. Very cool. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer. That's what you get. Very nice. 
another divination, and another Tillerian Scholar, and a Miscloaked Herald. This is exclusive to this deck. One mana for a 1-1 one, one can't be blocked. Well, actually, you know what? That's not too shabby. And you, you only have an M19. Interesting. All right. That's something to note as well about these decks, guys, is the cards that are available in them, if they're only available in these decks, the commons or uncommons or whatever, may have a little bit of value on the secondary market. So anybody, any of you beginners who get one of these decks, keep in mind that if you have like, uh, like, because there's a Land of War Elves in the green deck, apparently, that's M19, and it's not in M19. So that Land of War Elf has more value to some people because it's technically rare. All right, so for red, we've got a big fat dragon, which feels incredibly right. Shivan Dragon is back for another appearance. He's been around since the beginning of the game. Six mana gets you a 5-5 five, five flyer. That gets, for every red you spend, gets plus one, plus zero. Very much feels like fire breathing, so that's perfect. This card, there's a reason they keep reprinting it. People get sick of seeing this reprinted, but that's fine. The point of this isn't to give value or to get these to people who are like, oh, I've seen it forever. This is to transmit the concept to somebody. And a Shivan Dragon is a really great way to transmit the concept of a fire-breathing dragon in magic. All right, next up, we've got Kargan Dragon Rider. Now, this is exclusive to this deck. It's a grizzly bear that gets flying if you have a dragon. That's pretty cool, even if the artwork is pretty lame. All right, moving on, we've got Shock. There you go, standard red burn. Very simple to understand, and with the new wording, to any target. Planeswalkers, creatures, whatever, none of this nonsense redirection anymore, which is great. Really nice to see. Okay, Onake Ogre. So, Onake Ogre is here to show what you get as a vanilla with red. Instead of getting a 3-2 or a 2-3, you get a 4-2, because red is more aggressive. Not too shabby. I like the way that they contrast the vanillas through the different welcome decks to give you the, the concept of the different colors. All right, Hostile Minotaur. Four mana for a 3-3 three, three with haste. Yep, this is just like those old school... Um, there was that Minotaur, Talrum Minotaur from Mirage that was a 3-3 for haste, but it cost two red in its casting cost. And uh, this feels perfectly fine at one red and three colors. So that's all right, man. Next up, what do we got going on here? We got Lightning Strike. More burn. Totally, totally great. Two mana for three damage to any target. All right. Radiating Lightning. More burn. See? You get the idea when you're playing red? Burn them. Burn them. Or in this case, keep hitting them with Lightning. This, the flavor text is kind of dumb, though. As the Cabal Legions push into Shiv, they learned not to stand so close together. But this doesn't do one... I, I don't know. When it, it's just... it's Anyhow, let's, let's not worry about it. Let's move on. I'm going to get caught up on some nonsense. It doesn't matter. It's a decent card. It does, it does damage to multiple targets. I really like it. All right, Spark Tongue Dragon. Another dragon. I like that they made a common dragon. That's cool. All right, so five mana gets you a 3-3 three, three flyer. And when it enters battlefield, you can pay three mana to have, basically to have it do a lightning blast or something. That's cool. It ties in conceptually very well. And here we have Gigantic Red Fiery Burn. This is one of those gut punch, feels really fun cards. As a beginner, you don't really know that six is a lot of mana and it's going to be hard to cast. You just know that seven damage is a lot. And it feels really good when you hit somebody for seven. It's so cool. So that's a nice include. Then you got Trumpet Blast, which is a, a boost. You can see the contrast between this and the white cre uh, creature boost because this does not give a boost to toughness, only to power. Got another Hostile Minotaur. Fire Elemental. Uh, this also is a holdover from the very beginning of Magic. Totally feels right. Five mana for a 5-4. Just a big old Elemental made of fire. Simple, easy to understand. Another Cargan Dragon Rider here. All right, Mountain, Mountain, Mountain. Electrify. Another Burn Spell. This one can only hit creatures, though, for four mana. So you can see they're going to be able to tell that there's different levels. Like, as a beginner, you're going to go, wow, Lightning Strike is way better than this card. Okay, and Volcanic Dragon. Interesting. Includes six mana, four, four, flying with haste. Very cool. I like that this deck gives you, like, three or four dragons. That's pretty sweet. All right. And Goblin Motivator. One mana for a 1-1 one, one that taps to give a guy haste. Not too shabby. All right, because red is about temporary haste granting. All right, so we've covered three of the five. We're moving on to the Grave Waker deck now, the black one. We're going to do the green deck last because that's the one I'm most excited about because I want to build a green deck out of this, the Planeswalker deck, and the Deck Builder's Toolkit. All right, so Grave Waker. And thanks for bearing with me, guys. I know this is a longer video going through all this stuff, but I want I want to get the information out there. So Grave Waker, this is exclusive to the open house deck. This is the rare. 
This is 6 mana for a 5-5 five, five flyer. Pay 7 mana. Return target creature from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. I really like this. This guy's going in the king cube. So, that's a, that's a fantastic creature. I mean, it's nice and big, so it feels good to smash your opponent's face with it. And it shows the reanimation effect of black. It's weird, man. It's crazy. It's a crazy spirit turkey. Okay, let's move on. Boom. We got Skeleton Archer with some really intense artwork. Man, this undead archer looks incredible. Four mana gets you a 3-3, three, three, and when it enters the battlefield, it does one damage to any target. This is interesting and new. This, this, this kind of, I mean, yeah, it feels like black, but at the same time, it kind of doesn't. It feels almost like a red ability, but I like it. And I mean, that's it, it perfectly fits into black, so it's not a problem. Here we go. Look at this. One mana for a 2-2 two, two zombie that enters the battlefield tapped to show the slower speed of it. You can get power but at a cost. I love it. It's fantastic. Dear Graf Ghoul is a great way to transmit the concept of blacks like shambling slow undead. Strangling Spores is four mana instant target creature gets minus three, minus three to end of turn. And this illustrates that black handles creatures sometimes in different ways than dealing damage. Because not a lot of colors have that minus X, minus X ability, but that's black specialty and that can get around other abilities. So I like that. All right, what else do we got in here? We got Walking Corpse. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. So that contrasts against the Deer Graph Ghoul really, really well. I mean, look at that. You can get a common, right? And it's like, at first, you're like, well, it's 2-2, two, two, right? And this one's going to come to play tap. So kind of like this guy doesn't want to play tap. But this one comes out on the first turn. So on the second turn, it can attack and is whatever would be ready to block the same as this guy, but only cost one. Like, you're going to have that discovery path, which I really like. This seems pretty well put together. Sky March Bloodletter, three mana for a 2-2 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, your opponent loses a life. When you gain a life, yep, that's a black ability for sure. Lich's Caress, destroy target creature, you gain three life. The idea of draining life out of your opponent, very cool. Makes sense to me, not your opponent, your opponent's creature. I mean, it does say Caress, and his hands are nowhere near him, so that part's a little wonked, but yeah, I'll let that pass. Okay, let's keep moving on here. Infernal Scarring, this is... Uh, black and a colorless enchant creature gets plus two plus zero, and when this creature dies, draw a card. This is to show that black is totally willing to sacrifice its own stuff to gain. That's to let you know you want to put this on your dude and make him beefy, and then don't care, run him in. Who cares? Like just sacrifice him for more power, get more cards. That's black. That's what it does. You got grave digger here. The whole zombie concept, bringing creatures back from your graveyard, and this is the classic grave digger where he's staring at the the skull. It's just he looks. He looks so full of thought, so pensive in this artwork. I really like it. That's a, that's a good fit for the deck. Uh, this card here is exclusive to the open house decks. This is a two mana, one, two zombie jackal. And when he dies, each opponent loses two life. So this totally feels like a black card. I mean, it dies and there's this life loss. Urgh. Murder! Yup, that's a very black card. And this is a very simple concept too. You can't get more straightforward than this. I'll literally murder your guy, destroy target creature. That's great. Good include. Then we've got Bog Stomper. This is 6 mana for a 6-5. So this is just some random, gigantic, black vanilla thing. Don't have much to say about that. Strangling Spores again. Vampire Sovereign. 3-4 for a uh, 5 mana. And it flies. When it enters the battlefield, your opponent loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. Yep, that's totally. Feels super black. And vampires are cool, so that's a nice include. Sovereign's Bite. Oh, what? Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They're the same too. That guy's pledging service to her, and there she is draining draining blood from him. Although that's weird because then that would be that's another player, like nah, you know what? That, that's kinda of, right, whatever. Anyways, two mana, target player loses three life and you gain three life. Wow. Wow, this is pretty good actually. That's a solid card. Alright. And feels very black. Alright, another walking corpse. Grasping scoundrel. Alright, this guy is exclusive to these decks. One black mana for a 1-1. One, one. He has plus 1, plus 0 as long as he's attacking. So he's a 2-1 on the attack. That's not too bad. All right, cool. So that's the black deck. So that leaves one more, my friends. Time to move into the into the green deck. I'm also racing against the clock because I don't. I my other phone used to shut off after a certain amount of time, and I'm afraid that this might do the same, and I might lose part of the recording. So let's get into what, for me, is the most exciting deck because I'm totally going to build a green deck with this in the Planeswalker deck. Six mana for an 8-8, eight, eight, Aggressive Mammoth. Six mana for an 8-8 eight, eight, Trampler. This thing makes Force of Will look like a piece of garbage. Other creatures you control have Trample. This is amazing. I love this. This is this this guy is like the main reason that I wanted to do the green build. So let's see what other goodness we got in here. 
One mana gets you a Lanoir Elf. I mentioned that before. This is an M19 Lanoir. This is totally cool. Green has mana acceleration. This shows that, like, the druids are tied to the earth and everything. This is great. So that's a, that's a fantastic fit. Bum, 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 bum. Then we got Thornhide Wolves. You get four mana, gets you a four, five vanilla. So this is just whatever. This is just a big fat wolf. It feels cool, but it doesn't matter. All right, here we go. Here's a here's a green card. A green instant giant growth style spell. One green, one colors, titanic growth. Target creature gets plus four, plus four to end a turn. Look at that boost, man. You look at other colors like red and white, and they go, hey, I give everybody a boost. But green goes, no, no, no. I make giant predator. I eat your face. I love it, man. Green has such a great gut punch, visceral, I'm going to eat you with nature feel. All right, guys, and take a look at this. This is the three cost vanilla to illustrate green. And that is one green, two colors get you a three, three. It's better than both. Um, It's better than the uh, Loxodon one from white. And it's better than the Telerian one for sure. But you could argue that it's theoretically not better than the red one because the red one's four, two, right? So let's move onwards. Plummet, destroy target creature with flying. I don't like this card, but it does transmit the concept to beginners that green hates fly, flying creatures and can destroy those specifically because green doesn't have a lot of direct answers to creatures and it definitely doesn't have burn. All right, aside from the few random weird burn spells he made a long time ago. All right, we've got Ursine Champion. Now this is specific to the open house decks. One green, one colors, two, two. Now I like this because this is a bear. I love bears. And it's a human berserker. Pay eight mana. Nope, sorry. Pay six mana. And she gets plus three, plus three, and becomes a bear berserker until end of turn. Activate this ability only once a turn. So this is cool. It turns into a gigantic berserker. That's fun. The idea of, like like I said, making gigantic creatures and smashing with them. That's what green's about. Speaking of which, here's Oakenform, an enchantment that will give a permanent plus three, plus three boost to a creature, making it bigger and scarier. Again, tying into that fun concept of make a giant guy and smash face. Wall of Vines. One mana for a 0-3 Defender Reach. Well, this reminds me of Wall of Wood back when I started, but this is better because it can block flying creatures, and green has a hard time with flying creatures. So this can buy you time while you establish setting up a giant, massive creature to eat face. Speaking of which, look at this guy! Yeah! I'm putting you in, boy. All right, what are you? Seven mana for a 7-7 Trampler, and he can block an additional creature each combat. Yeah, forget that. He'll be punching people and killing them. Right on, man. You and me are doing it, Gaspar Twins. I like that. Rabid Bite. This is one of the ways that green has to deal with creatures. Uh, one green, one colors. Target creature you control deals damage to uh, equal to its power to target creature you don't control. That or fighting. This is pretty sweet. It requires that you have a creature out, though. So if you compare this to Lightning Strike, this does nothing on its own. Red has a severe advantage when it comes to killing creatures with ease. Giant Spider, yeah, man, this was around at the beginning of Magic, this is cool, this feels great, just, it makes sense the whole way around, where it can block flyers because it has a giant spider web, it's 2-4 because it's it's got like a big fat tough body chilling down in its web, love it, it has reach, so green, green gets reach instead of flying with almost everything, green doesn't fly, it pulls things from the sky or ensnares them, we got another titanic growth, we got a bristling boar, 3, 4 mana for a 4-3, can't be blocked by more than one creature. Very cool. So you make this guy big and barrel through with him. Be like, yeah, put oak and form on him and titanic growth and stuff. And then get out that friggin' mammoth and just bam, bam. I like it. Colossal Dreadmaw. Sweet. This is the crawl worm of the modern age. Six mana for a 6-6 six, six trampler. What? Man, he's way better than crawl worm. Way better. God damn, that's sweet. All right. What do we got next? Highland Game. And that is two mana for a 2-1, and when it dies, you gain two life. Cool, man. That's all right. It's like you eat the meat of the stag. I dig it. And a second Lanoir. Very nice. All right, my friends. So that wraps up the entirety of the review of the open house decks. As I stated, we're going to be moving from this into the Planeswalker deck and then into the toolkits. So at the end of this video here, I have linked a playlist to all of the Planeswalker deck videos. So you're going to want to watch those because they'll get you up to speed on what's going on. And it's also excellent for my channel because you're watching more of my videos. And YouTube loves it when I get that watch time. So come on by. We'll be back later with the toolkit. We'll crack that open in another video. And then we'll do a final video where we actually build a deck with all of it the same way a beginner would. Thanks for swinging by. 
Rick and Morty says, we are the six color. Oh!